is what I'll do. I will lift my hands and worship you. bless all of you here in the cars as well. It's good to be back with you. It's not like we would want things to be, but aren't you thankful that we can do this at least? I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. The title of my message this morning is Perilous Times, and I think that you would agree that might fit, but you wonder what I'm going to talk about. Well, if you have your Bibles and want to follow along, Turn to 2 Timothy, if you would please, chapter 3, the first verse. Paul writes to the young preacher, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, meaning lacking self-control, Fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And then he says, from such turn away. Come on down to verse number 10. But thou, writing to Timothy, thou hast fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture... Paul writes, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. He wrote in the first verse of this chapter, Timothy, know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. I think we're indeed living in perilous times today, like Paul described as he began writing. Perilous means dangerous. It means hazardous. And never in our lifetime, I suggest, have we faced anything like we're facing today. And, and one of the worst things, I guess, that's disrupted everything is this virus thing that we're still, still battling. Now you say, uh-oh, back on that. Going to be a carbon copy of last week. Well, no. No, not quite. Just, just hang on if you will. We'll get somewhere different. But I am going to be referring to that because it's affecting us today. Many people live in fear of catching that virus. I guess it's a, a well-founded fear probably. It's altered our lives. It's altered our recreation. It's altered our worship services. It's altered our workplaces. And, and, and to affect everybody, it's, it's altered how you go to Walmart. <laughs> that doesn't bother me as much as some other things, but some of you are about to have a fit. I, I, know, I know one lady who is to, to go to Walmart. But things, things that have always been good, like washing our hands, are now a civic duty. And, and emphasized, and we hear words and phrases we don't normally hear like coronavirus and, and uh, shelter in place. That sounds almost like a battle, doesn't it? Shelter in place and social distancing. What in the world is social distancing? We know it, you'd say six feet. Well, we didn't know that a couple of months ago, did we? And how it's determined, I, I don't know, and many other things. But I think that we can agree that we are in perilous times. But there's more than the virus. Financially, we're in perilous times. I don't think there's ever been a time in history, at least not that I've read about in what reading in history that I have done, that a nation, not just our nation, but nations around the world have, have intentionally shut down their economies almost to a grinding halt. Now, things are looking a little better, I suppose, and, and that's good, but we're not out of the woods by any means. And some people are saying, come fall, we may have a big resurgence of the coronavirus, and, and that might lead to another lockdown. And if that does, we don't know what kind of a downturn our economy might have. And if the gains would be wiped away just real quickly. We don't, we don't know about that. And then some are worried sick about the political situation. Some are worried sick about the uh, election that's coming up. Some, someone said the other day, Pastor, I am scared. If so-and-so gets elected and she put in the name of the, of the candidate she was not going to vote for, she said, if so-and-so is elected, I'm, a wor I'm worried that America will not be the way it's always been up until now. Well, in the past, I, I've been concerned about elections and I voted the way my conscience dictated that I vote, but I was never so pessimistic to think that if the other guy was elected that we'd just fall to pieces uh, because 
both candidates would say that would happen and it never did quite and our republic is still standing here and the constitution has held so far but you know this time i will admit this time i will admit that it seems different somehow and we need to pray brethren for our country not just because of the virus not just because of politics, but because of both and the economy and all of it rolled into one big ball. We need to pray for our country because we are living in perilous times. We, we look around and we see, we, we, we see our police force under attack from some quarters and, and they're criticized for what they do and they make mistakes. Our police officers are human just like we are and we certainly know that we make mistakes and occasionally they do, but the, the resultant demonstrations and lawlessness and mayhem that come ostensibly because of that but I think maybe because of other things uh, the the race baiting and and the stoking of those that want to report on problems I, I I'm, I'm think let me just say it if I may I'm thinking about the, the, the news media that seems to me, let me just say it, that seems to me to be throwing fuel on the fire. I, I, I don't know. And I know what I just said, and I know I can be criticized for that, but as a former radio and TV news writer and reporter, I, I, I think I've got the right to say that as much as anybody. And, and I do say it because I see it, and, and, and I believe that what I say is true. I really do. Now, I'm not going to go into the rise of Russia as a military competitor and the rise of China as an economic competitor. I don't want to talk about that this morning. I don't want to talk about the deterioration of our society's moral standing and, and the rise of all things evil and the promotion of all things evil in our land. But there is pressure all the time to exp uh, accept ungodly conditions and, and call them normal. And, and uh, it, it bothers me, but that's not the main point this morning. Without a question, we are living in perilous times. Uh, but years ago, during the Second World War, a lady named Ruth Case Jones, K. Jones wrote a song that you're familiar with, a gospel song. It was called In Times Like These. When she wrote it, World War II was going and, and it seemed like our forces were not making progress in Italy and other places and, and the war just dragged on and on and there was rationing and, and uh, you couldn't buy things. I've, I've heard people talk about you couldn't get automobile tires, you had to have coupons to buy all kinds of things and, and you know, we're, we're seeing a touch of that today. Darlene went into a, a, a little store this week to buy some vinegar. Who would think that vinegar, it wasn't rationed, it just wasn't there. She wants to buy can lids. Who would think that can lids would be not rationed but just not, we have been spoiled. Other nations have had this. We've been spoiled. If we want anything, we'd just go to the store and buy it. It would be there and we'd get it. And it's not so much that way today and, and and I don't know what's going to happen, and you don't know what's going to happen, but it's a sign of the perilous times that we live in. Well, Miss Jones wrote this song, and, and, and you know it, it begins like this. In times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. <laughs> well... In times like these, she said, you need a Savior. Why do we need a Savior? And by the way, the Savior she's writing about was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's who she's writing about, and we know that's who we're talking about this morning. Why do we need a Savior? Well, first, because without Jesus, we're sinners. <coughs> we are sinners. We're, we're guilty before a righteous God. Romans uh, in Romans, it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, Without him, we're sinners. Secondly, we need a Savior because God is going to judge everything someday. Jesus told a, a religious man named Dick Nicodemus from John 3, 16, He that believeth on the Son hath 
everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life. And he said, but the wrath of God will abide on him. Now, that's pretty black and white. Sometimes we read things in the Bible and we wonder, now, what exactly does that mean? But this is, this is plain. Jesus just laid it right out there for us. He's saying, if we believe in Jesus as our Savior, we can have everlasting life. And if we've not believed in him, then God's wrath is laid up in store for us. And then another reason we need a Savior is because there's going to be a destruction of the evil in hell. Uh, John in Revelation saw that and he wrote, Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me ask you a question. In these times, if God forbid that you came down with this COVID-19 virus and, and, and died, where would you go? Where would you go when you died? See, a, a Savior has been provided for us to save us from our sins, and, and Jesus came to earth and lived and died and took upon... He lived a sinless life, but he took upon himself our sins and died for us. And the Bible says over and over again, if, if we would turn from sin and if we would believe on the Lord that God would forgive us our sins and would be our Savior. And if you haven't done that, let me encourage you to do that even as you sit there in your car this morning. You can do that in your car as well as you can inside the church house. So she said, in times like these, we need a Savior in writing her song. Then in the next clause, she says, in times like these, you need an anchor or in other words, you need safety. A ship's anchor uh, w was let down and, and caught on rocks and held the ship steady and steadfast even in stormy times. And, and we look for something like that too. We look for safety and we need it. <laughs> we, th we think sometimes, well, we've got social security. It, it's sure, but I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket. Uh, young people, young parents, you, you can't count enough on that. It's good to have. And you might think, well, I've got a secure job. I, I've got a steady job. They're not going to lay me off or not going to fire me. But one accident, one accident could put you out of work. You may think, well, I've got good health, but tomorrow you might get the virus that people are, are, are getting. And it could be uh, serious and, and it might be very mild. We, we don't know. But the truth of the matter is, in this world, there's not anything completely safe and secure for us except in Jesus. In Him, we can have security if, he is, if, if He's our Savior. In Hebrews, He said, I, He's quoted saying, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Think about that. I will never, He said, leave thee nor forsake thee. And so if you're uh, trusting in Him, and if He's your Savior, He'll be there with you all the time. In, in John 10, verse 28, it says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And there it is, right there. Never be able to separate us from the love of God. It is His love for us that is our safety, that is our security. God will not quit loving us no matter where we have to go, no matter what goes on in the world. God will not stop loving us no matter even who is president come next January, no matter if the economy sinks like a rock or if it does a V-turn and blast completely out of sight, God is still going to love us. And even if our country turns towards socialism, God is going to love us. Our joy is not in money. It is not in politics. It is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's where we need to count on. Christians in the past, in good times and bad times, have found hope and peace in Christ, whether they lived in democracies, whether they lived in democratic republics like we have here in America, whether they lived under repressive Muslim regimes, whether they lived under communist dictatorships. Christians have found by the grace of God that they could endure, and some of the greatest Christians Christian movements that there have been in history 
grew out of the midst of famines and plagues and other hard times. The promises of God are just as valid, folks. They're just as valid in times of economic depressions and war and pandemics. <laughs> we all know that word now, don't we? And every other kind of disaster. And in times like these, Jesus offers peace for our hearts and we can kind of find comfort and joy in him. If we just block out all the bad news, turn off the TV for a little while sometimes and refocus on Jesus and spend some time in prayer and in the scripture. And that word brings me to my next point. The second verse of our song says, in times like these, you need the Bible. You need the scriptures. Why do we need the Bible in times like these? Well, in First Chronicles, back in your Old Testament, it talks about the children of Issachar, and it says this about them. They were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible, an ancient book, to be sure, but the Bible gives us knowledge of our times as well. And listen, I'm not going to become prophetic on you because I'm not a prophet, but let me tell you something that I believe, and I think you, if you read the Bible, will too. We could be, folks, we could be in the end times. Now, I'm not going to speculate about how close we are, but I know that Paul wrote to Timothy and said, this know also in the last days perilous times will come and, and we're sure living in the perilous times. <laughs> we read earlier what he said about men being lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, and so on, all those things that he talked about. Well, we need the scriptures to understand what's going on in our world and, and what we need to do about it. And we need the children, the, the scriptures to rear our children. The Bible will be a help in raising our kids. <laughs> Almost every phase of life affects our young people, government and education and entertainment, and, and it seems like they all conspire to undermine your authority as parents and grandparents and, and seek to make worldly, to secularize your kids, and that's not going to lead to anything but confusion and destruction if they follow that philosophy. Now, Jesus referred to Satan as a thief, and he said, The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and destroy, but then he assures his people, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Satan wants to steal from your kids and destroy them, and he wants to steal your kids as well. It's only as we bring them to Jesus and as the scripture teaches, that they can have life and have it more abundantly. <laughs> Satan wants to enslave our kids through sin and through destructive habits which he and his people promote out there. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He is the embodiment. Jesus is the embodiment of truth in living form and the Bible is the embodiment of truth in written form. And it's only as our kids find Jesus and learn the scriptures that they can find true freedom in this life. We also need the Bible to reach our Jerusalem for, for the world. Our Jerusalem is Macedonia <laughs> because the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God and we, we reach others only as we get them in to hear the word and be saved. Only as we tell other people about salvation as it's offered freely in the scripture, only then can they find the Lord so in times like these, as never before, we need to go to the Bible. And then, one more thing. In times like these, we need to serve. <laughs> the second line of the second verse of the song says, In times like these, oh, be not idle. <sighs> there's, there's trouble and peril in this world like never before. 
But that's the time when God's people need to be out in the vineyard doing all that we can do to reach people for Christ and invite those who are saved that are not going to church somewhere to come to, to the church here or if you go to another church down the road or up the road to that church as long as it's a fundamental Bible-believing church. We need to be serving the Lord with all our hearts knowing what's out there in the world. We, we, it's, it, it's something that presses upon us because of the cares of the world that we need to do what we can to help in the world situation. And, and so don't be discouraged. Let's not, brethren, let's not lose heart. Let's not be discouraged. Let, let's, let's not be gloomy. Let's not be fearful. Let's not be idle or lazy or apathetic. Every day brings more problems to this sin-laden world. However, every day also brings more opportunities for service for the Lord and for a fellow man. And it brings us one day closer. Every day brings us one day closer to the return of our Lord who said he was coming back again. Let's not be idle. Let's be about our Father's business. Let's put aside the weights and, and, and the sins that beset us and get serious about the business of serving God because we do live in times of great peril that require the best that we have for our friends and our neighbors and our neighborhood and our church and our God. Now let me get back into something that I don't like to talk about. We're in the middle of a political campaign and think of those running for president and the people working for them and think about how hard they're campaigning to try to get the votes. Why are they doing that? Well, I guess it's because they think they would be the best for the job and the ideas they have are what they want for the country and so on like that. Think also about the people that work in laboratories and for the government and are doing everything under their power to try to get uh, answers for this virus and vaccines for it and so on like that. And they, they work long hours and they put in time. Why are they doing that? They think that their cause is a good cause. Let me tell you that the cause we have and the, the cause we're working for is a good cause. The cause of spreading the gospel, the cause of being diligent and serving God and, and giving Him all is, is a good cause, and we need to do that. We do live in perilous times, but we need a Savior in those times. And let me ask you again, have you met that Savior? Have you come to know Him? Are you serving Him? If not, again, right there in the car, you could say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Let me be part of your family. And he'll do it. I ran across a song I want to quote to you. I'm not going to sing it so you can relax. But I ran across it. I've never seen this before. But I want to share a few verses from this old hymn that I'd never heard the title is The Precious Book or The Precious Old Book, and I'm not sure which. It's very old. Uh, writer was one Bernice Payman. She said, Though the cover is worn and the pages are torn, and though places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is the book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. When I prayerfully look in the precious old book and my eyes scan the pages, I see many tokens of love from the Father above who is nearest and dearest to me. The old book is my guide. Tis a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my way. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it today. In times like these, like never before, let's read and heed the Bible. Get into God's Word, spend some time in prayer, spend some time with the Savior. In times like these, we, these we, need, to, we need to serve Him. You see, the world needs our service and, and the church needs our service, but most of all, you need the benefit 
of serving God. It's in service to God and others that we're blessed. We become the hands and feet of Jesus and we go for Him and we work for Him and we talk for Him. This pandemic's led to unprecedented loneliness and isolation and depression and, and suffering. But think of the opportunity it gives to be a blessing when we can have a smile on our face and greet others with joy and the hope that's in our heart. Every opportunity that comes, we need to point someone toward Him because He's the answer and we need to step up and serve Him and others by telling the world who He is. Let's go back to that song one more time. The chorus says this, This rock is Jesus, yes, He's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. We are living in perilous times, but hang on, friends, because I found a verse in Psalms I want to share with you. Psalm 30, number 5. His anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. God bless you all. I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the solid. rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, be very sure, your anchor the solid